Alright, so it's dark. You see this. Uh, it's actually more along the lines of 9 o'clock Saturday night, uh, sweet tea and cigarettes rather than Sunday morning coffee. My day is winding down. Um, let me see your updates. We set a drop dead date on this Camino project, the 8th, which means it's got to be an upholstery by the 1st, which means that weekend or end of week before the 1st, it has to be bedline, which means we have to have bodywork, prime, block, seal, that done by then. So next week, basically, we've got next week to get the rest of this, the bulk of this project pushed out. It can be done. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Uh, let me see. This week, I, I did that motor swap last week for family, and that was a rough one. Uh, bear with me with the light and all that shit. It, it's dark out, so here we are. Um, motor swap went. The motors were just different enough. I'm actually going to have to do the oil pan, transfer the oil pans, because one had a sending in, in the oil pan, the old one, the new one doesn't. So now it's blinking that there's low oil level. Um, stupid shit. I hadn't done a proper drop the K member, pull it out, transfer parts, put it all back together, put it back in. Uh, module swap like that in six, almost seven years. It used to be a normal thing. We were doing something like that every three weeks at my shop when I was just turning wrenches. Um, I'm rusty. I didn't get it all buttoned up and down the road until Tuesday. Sadly, at some juncture, I'm sure the starter had 180,000 miles on it. It died. I tried to put myself in a position to go and just flop that out because the starter's like a 15, literally a 15 minute job. But my brother lives in um, Dubuque. It's almost three hours away. There's a day traveling for 15 minutes of work. I, I, it sucks. I wish I could just bump over there knock it down and get the fuck out. It takes two different size sockets and 15 minutes. Probably don't even have to lift the car up off the ground to do it. It's always something, isn't it? Alright, so this week we got part-time guy. Um, no experience in a body shop, but not an idiot. So he's very handy. Uh, he's very casual on his terms, which it, it is what it is. I'm going to use the help when I got the help and not use it when I don't. Had new kids start today that has experience, actual tangible experience in a shop. He worked at a shop that, uh, a local one, that was basically a, it is basically a used car lot for classic cars. I mean, that's really how they treat the cars. Not terrible, but not, um, nothing to write home to Ma about on a lot of them. They get them at auction, doll them up, and dump them in the market. Nothing wrong with that. It's preserving American steel, even if it's not 100% correct. He worked out pretty well. He only worked three or four hours today. And then I got everybody out of the shop, and I finished painting up the last project from last week to catch up. We got one more we were supposed to shove up this week that did not happen. We'll get it bumped out by Wednesday. It's an easy, small, but we're getting these revolving jobs with the lots, so that's going to help us in cash flow. Uh, I came to a decision. And it's basically, I, I put my balls up on the fucking table, and we're going to see if they get squashed or not. Uh, one lad has some experience. Enough to be very useful in the shop, I think, in the next three weeks. He'll be 
up to speed and really moving along. Um, Aaron's almost to the point he can take a car from Keys to Paint Booth, from Paint Booth to Keys for the car lot stuff. His body works improved, his eye for details improved, and his timeliness has improved dramatically. Um, you know, the one cat that left us, it's a bum deal. I wish it hadn't gone down that way. People come and people go. It is what it is. So it'll be the next week I'll get these things tidied up, get some collections made, and I think get us back on the fiscal track. Uh, Tuesday, I've got another part-timer starting. We're going to see where that leads. The one fellow that doesn't have shop experience may have to move on. But that that's where that I, I decided to put it all on the table and see what can happen. I've got 6,000 feet. If I can put four people in there and turn out old and new projects. The old projects are throwing good money after bad until we get them to cash. Once we liquidate them, get them gone, then we're good. And that's the aim, is to get enough qualified help in there and see what comes of it. Um, I'm going to get on Chuck's ass next week. That's our outside sales guy. He's It's a commission gig. So the more he turns, the more he can make, and so forth and so on. He's had outside issues to deal with himself, so it hasn't, we haven't been pushing that. We're going to start pushing that. I want to get to where I'm paying out healthy commission checks. Because if I'm paying out healthy commission checks, it means he's bringing in healthy amounts of work. I'm trying to increase my labor pool from 80 to 100 hours a week to a couple hundred hours a week. If you've got a hundred, couple hundred hours a week labor available, um, dramatically increases the rate of what's going on uh, by almost threefold. <laughs> the sad truth is a well-oiled machine, a well-put-together team uh, four guys can do the work of eight guys individually working by themselves. And the reality typically is those four guys will do the work of three guys working separately individually rather than as a team. So it's time to build a team. Find the guys' strengths and weaknesses, train them out of their weaknesses, and lean on their strengths. Which means I've got to dust off my copy of procedures, shop procedures, how we go through these projects and deal with every project to maintain the system dependency. So far it's been word of mouth, but it's only been one or two guys I've been dealing with. And it's usually on one new guy at a time. So I'll have to put together a pamphlet, a safety protocol, and then shop procedure. That way I've got a signature, they've signed, everybody knows the gig. That's been the week. Next week should be hair raising at the very least. The girl who got downsized this spring, she was another victim of corporate downsizing, um, landed a new gig, which is outstanding for our little household. Um, she starts that Monday. Our youngest, we've got daycare set up. My stepson, my my little boy, our four-year-old, he's going to school. He turns five here shortly, so he actually starts kindergarten. Apparently, he met the cutoff just barely. ready for these little ones. You know, my, my, our, my oldest, he's uh, moving on to junior high or intermediate. I don't know how they break these schools up anymore. It's really weird. So, 
there's that. I'm gonna work till noon tomorrow, which is why I am recording now. I gotta finish up a lock car, and then I gotta get hammering on this Camino project, get it back in balance. Owner was in, um, he wasn't ecstatic, but he was satisfied that there's, we're moving forward, as we told him. Uh, I've got four pains in my ass right now that are way behind. If I can get four piece on the floor, we'll, we'll grind through them. Um, and I gotta get schedules for two of them written up and done so that I can have drop dead dates uh, for three of them. Three, there's four of them. There's three that I need to get a schedule written up for. One of them I already have, the, the Camino Project. Um, the owners deserve that, especially something that's gone months overdue. The Mercedes project we had tucked in the corner, it went to mechanics uh, a couple, three months ago. Um, I was starting to get very disgruntled. I got a call, what's today, Saturday? I got a call yesterday, or no, I got a call Thursday, I believe it was. And anyhow, end of the week, I got a call from the mechanic. What are we doing with this thing? I, said, I need it running. We need it to belch fire. That's, that's what we need right now. Once we get it running, then we go through all the mechanical, suspension, steering, brake, engine, fuel delivery, electrical. And those are the things to go through next. It's a big fucking list. Let's start knocking down little chunks and we'll get lists put together of the parts required and labor times and prices. <laughs> so that's been sitting dormant for couple handfuls of months because it's a tough one and I, until I got to here to this location I didn't have space to really dig into it and then I got it in over my head mechanically I learned to draw that line of we don't do mechanic work here and I got a stark reminder of that this last week so he says, oh, no, 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 it runs. What? It runs. Pretty fucking well. And that was exciting news for me. So, next week I will get a hold of the owner. We're going to go over to the mechanic shop. He's going to hear it run, and he's going to be confronted with a list. He's got a deposit in, so we're going to deduct lots from said deposit and move on. Um, I've gotten better with my customer service because I'm terrible at it. Terrible at updating folks. Terrible at letting people know what's going on and where we're at. And I'm terrible at letting things slide and get by and go because we've always been shorthanded. So I'm facing these problems head on, face forward, doing the best I can. I'm an ugly mug, so looking in the mirror sucks, but, um,. On that ethical level, I can face the guy that's in the mirror now. I'm a little disgusted with him, but I can face the guy in the mirror now. Next month we celebrate five years. About four of those years, nothing more than professional hobbyist. Developing skills, acquiring client base, refining skills I already had. Acquiring equipment. Now we're at the base minimum of what should be to start a shop. I'm going about this ass backward. Uh, if there's any question on that. But we're making it. We're pushing forward. Uh, my good buddy mechanic, he's looking for a change in his life. So I want to shove out a bunch of these projects and open up floor space because he's a hell of a wrench. Rent him out his floor space and let him go. When stuff comes up on our end or pay him hourly to work on shit like everybody else, you know, likewise, it's just how it works. 
keep a mechanic in-house, that way we can do the small jobs that come in. We'll figure that out. There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of changes coming. I'm going to be a shop owner, not a self-employed craftsman. That's heartbreaking. Somebody's got to do it. I've got the vision. I've got the plan. I want to do the work. I've been struggling with that dichotomy for so long. I want to do the work. I want to be the guy on the floor. Well, if I'm going to achieve the level of fiscal and um, caliber project success that I am aiming for, I'm going to have to start running things a little more seriously from the office and spending more time there than on the floor. Back to the matter. I think I'm going to have to spend the next three to five years managing. I'll go through probably a hundred people. I'll get the team built up in a cord and then I can hire someone to replace me in the office. Most likely. Maybe. I don't know. But I'm going to have to step back from the field more than I wish to to accomplish what I need to. And I'm seeing that. Uh, if I've got three guys on the floor banging away um, I'm going to be painting, welding, ordering materials and parts, and shuttling vehicles and getting paid and writing tickets and so automating as much of that, getting all that on computers is the next step. Everything right now is just handwritten. I've got a simple, low-key, unsophisticated shop. <laughs> My aim is to keep it that way. <laughs> but bring up the caliber and quality. For any company to survive, there has to be a certain percentage of profit. And we're not talking about guys with sandals wandering around the desert. So I gotta get there. Sooner than later. That's it. That's the skinny. My house of cards is stacking up and um, I think I'm ready. I'm scared shitless, but I think I'm ready to take that next step forward into getting really serious about what we're doing here. Get it organized, get things pushing, going forward. folks. Like I said, this is Saturday night, which is why I'm shooting in the dark. My lovely assistant will be converting this file over and getting it loaded up for me in the morning, and I will be at the shop working. I thank you all for your support. Um, you guys shoot straight, you're honest, you're frank. I don't offend easily, so I take every fragment of information and cipher it and plug it away as best I'm able. One last duh for the evening, any obvious folks. Get your body work roughed out in 80 grit with a hard block, big, thick, flat, hard block. Get it roughed out, feathered out, done. 80 grit. Then you primer it. I used to try to feather it back and back and back, 80, then 180, then 320, then 500, with these hopes that I can just seal it and shoot it. It doesn't work that way. You primer and block everything, then seal it. Um, car lot work, I use a direct metal primer. 
which is good for sealer for small projects, not overalls really. Um, I will prime it, mix half again or twice as much as I need, prime it, and this stuff sets up quick. And then I'll come back in, guide to it, block it out, get all the scratches and pinholes out. Then dump more reducer, double up the reducer in the cup, stir it up, purge the tip so there's no thick, heavy laden primer on the tip, and go back at it, seal everything up with the same product because it, it works very well, it lends all the proper corrosion protection qualities you want. Um, not a short shortcut, just a sidestep, it's a different product rather than epoxy. It allows me to correct errors on the fly because it sets up and, and is uh, toolable so quickly. Finish your body work in 80 grit. You won't have waves and halos and mapping the same way if you try to descend into lower grits. I learned that from an old body man and friend of mine that's at the shop a lot. He's been trying to drill that in my head for two fucking years and I never listened. And I let him do it. I let him have it his way and uh, he was helping Aaron with some body work. One side Aaron did it the way I told him to, same damage each side. One side he did the work like Aaron told him to, or like I told him to, and then the other side Aaron did the work like Jerry told him to. <laughs> Um, both sides came out impeccable for car lot work, and it was a good, nice, newer car, but there was a lot less material and time spent on the side we did as Jerry suggested. That's my pro tip for the night. That's what I learned. There's always something to learn, folks. Talk to y'all later.